So we are working on multiple innovation and co-innovation based on open source technology. For both governments, we work in 20, 20, more than 20 countries now. Um, here, uh, I'm board member of French Tech Vietnam, which is the ecosystem, French Vietnamese ecosystem for startups. Um, that was um, actually really labelized uh, four years ago, so I helped to create it, the label here in Vietnam. And the third reason why I'm here, I guess, is that also I'm launching a very, very, very special place here in Hanoi dedicated to sustainable city. So basically it's a multiple uh, innovation center uh, with both French and Vietnamese companies um, where there will be a lot of open innovation. Uh, incubation part and actually the, the main issue, the main actually objective is to build a, a platform dedicated to a smart and sustainable city for Hanoi. But not only that, actually we want to create Vietnamese technology for Vietnam, for Vietnamese city that we could also export to other countries in Asia. This is why I'm here and I'm very happy. Looking for people who are interested in sustainable cities, so um, just come and talk to me whenever you want. Thank you, Sally. We are so very happy to have you. Ah, I see a friendly face at the back. We just arrived, so now I'd like everybody to welcome Miss Ashi, co-director of Startup Grind. And also the How are you? Hi everyone, my name is Hachi. Um, I have Vietnamese name, but I prefer you to call me Hachi. Um, so I'm currently the co-director of Startup Grind, um, the head of community of uh, Global Shapers. And if you care about the startup community in Vietnam, you can come to me and we can talk. Thank you. You can have a seat, you can Now I'd like everybody also to welcome Mr. Aaron, CEO of Hatch, founding in Japan as well. Aaron, thank you. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about Hatch. Uh, we've done a lot of programs for on individual entrepreneurs over the past six years. We're one of the early um, ecosystem builders in Vietnam, and we've done all kinds of events. Uh, Hatch is modeled after Startup Hong Kong. We started out with coffee talks, and we Eventually, we started uh, producing Hatch Fair, which became a very large entrepreneurship uh, conference and startup exhibition. Um, the future of Hatch is that we're now working more closely with the um, Silicon Valley, and we're, we're working more closely to help make uh, Tech Fest in December a, a great event. And I'm also involved in a startup called Extra Ballast. Incidentally, I'm from San Francisco Bay Area, which is also called Silicon Valley. And extra ballast means outside the valley. Um, if you're in the valley, it's kind of like uh, a club, and a lot of people in the valley have early access to good companies, and people not in the valley don't have that access. So, extra ballast is a platform so that on, uh, investors anywhere can invest in startups everywhere. And so, it's an online platform for matching investors to startups internationally, and our company will do comprehensive due diligence on startups on a proactive, ongoing basis so that investors can then look into our portfolio and make quick decisions. Uh, my background is in uh, communications, and very quickly, uh, I was a product namer, uh, and I named things like deodorant scents and uh, packaging copy, uh, and I did the nomenclature for FedEx. So. Uh, how did I get into startups? Uh, I've always been interested in startups. I was selling 
uh, office supplies to my mother when I was eight years old. I took them out of her office, set up a shop in my bedroom, and sold them back to her. <laughs> so uh, I like entrepreneurship and I like communication, so I help entrepreneurs with their communications. Thanks. And last but not least, uh, everybody, please welcome Harvey, partner at Acebound Venture. Hi, Harvey, thank you for coming. Hi, everyone, uh, thanks for the invite. Um, I'm actually quite new to the uh, startup space. Uh, the businesses that I've been involved in have been quite uh, traditional, prepared model type. Uh, so we've got a uh, recruitment firm, a headhunting firm. Um, and I'm also involved in a property development firm. Uh, however, we are with Ace Farm Ventures, uh, we're actually starting to look into this startup space because uh, I've always been very interested in this. Uh, what we're actually trying to aim to do is actually to connect uh, Vietnamese startups with Singaporean startups uh, through our networks as well as through um, uh, programs. So, yeah, feel free to uh, speak with me if you would like to know more. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm very, very excited because we have a very uh, diverse uh, panel, lots of uh, different actors of the, of the ecosystem. Uh, what I want this panel to be is really open. Uh, so if you have a question, you want to stop, stop one of our panelists and say, hey, I don't agree with what you're saying, or yes, I agree, and I want to say something more, add to it. That's what we want to do today. Uh, so, the name, the topic of the of the topic of the of the panel is entrepreneurs and ecosystem: the dilemma between growth and sustainability. So, as you must know, Vietnam has been enjoying a big economic growth since more than 10 years, with last year reaching its highest uh, rate. Of growth, the startup ecosystem is booming. That's also why School Lab decided to, to come. The government is creating uh, a better framework, legal framework for startups, really to foster this innovation. But all this growth, of all, all this this blooming uh, activities, are actually also creating this. Uh, short-term uh, compartments from the startups and sorry <laughs> the relationship between entrepreneurship and sustainable development is actually getting more and more attention and so now I want to discuss with this great panel about <coughs> the three central aspects of sustainability which is not only the environment but economic prosperity social equity, and the environment. So, I'm going to ask an open question uh, first to Archie. How sustainability is perceived for you uh, as co-director of uh, Startup Prime, so the biggest uh, startup ecosystem in the, in the world, actually. How is uh, sustainability perceived in local entrepreneurs' mindsets, who are, of course, focused uh, by growth and sales. Hello. Yeah. So um, before before going through uh, to direct to your question, I would like to uh, give you guys a little bit of the background about um, what I am doing in in the startup. What is startup grind and what is uh, global shippers? So basically, Startup Grind is uh, a community of uh, young talents, and uh, we are the largest uh, community in the world to support start, uh, the startup. And we was born from uh, Silicon Valley, and uh, we now have been uh, more than uh, 125 uh, local chapters around the world. And um, basically, what we are doing is uh, we connect the startup uh, in the local chapter together, and we create spaces for you guys to, um, you know, uh, to networking and uh, get to know each other and create more values. As like side by side, we have a global shippers, which is uh, led by the amazing guy over there, founding um, creator of uh, global shippers, and um, so what we're doing 
is um, is we connect the young people under the age uh, 30. Um, a very elite uh, community that are going to create positive impact to the society because we all do in business, because we all um, care about the society and we want to we want to give back to the society when we really have our uh, when we already uh, have our own success. So um, back to your question um, that about what what I think about the sustainability and from from your, your point of view, this do you see any trends in the local ecosystems in terms of mindset uh, about uh, startups and sustainability? I see. Um, Wow, <laughs> that's a tough question. Um, trending right now, I guess everyone is talking about plastic. Everyone is talking about environment. Everyone is talking about zero waste. So basically, if you can see right now, all the uh, corporate is actually um, starting to care more about the environment, starting to care more about making more positive impact instead of making money. And actually, there are more and more startup um, uh, start doing things such as um, environmental uh, uh, impact and uh, community impact and um, zero waste and, 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 and etc. So what I see is uh, the startup community starting moving to the stage in Vietnam, starting moving to the stage of um, there are more and more startups care about the environmental and the society and there are more and more uh, capital ventures and investors care more about this and they want to put money in it and they really care about not only how your startup making values and making money but they also care about how your startup affect to the society. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. So uh, investors are not only thinking about returns, but also about uh, the impact that the startups have. Uh, Celine, um, so I know that with Linagora you've been developing lots of uh, inclusive, ethical and open source uh, technologies, but you also mentioned uh, this new project, uh, this Smart City Hub. Um, can you tell us more of your role in this uh, Smart City Hub as a, I would say a connector because I, I know you a little bit and we talked about investors and startups but I think there are other actors so uh, can you share with us? Uh... Yeah, um, maybe I'm sorry I'm not going to answer right now your question but um, <laughs> sustainability is not about only the purpose of your company. What we think and what we have been applying in the last 20 years is sustainability as a business model, right? Sustainability with integrating with the communities wherever we are and develop with instead of just selling, selling out and go away. Third thing is also sustainability inclusiveness, right? Meaning um, we have been investing, uh, uh, I have been investing a lot on education. I believe that you know, if you educate well the people, if you give awareness, then this is how you build something different, uh, something more sustainable also, because at the end of the day, it's all about the values and the vision that you have and you bring, right? So, um, uh, three, four months ago, I had this discussion with the mayor of Hanoi, and he was asking me, well, Celine, um, I really like one thing in France, it's called uh, Station F. Um, probably a lot of people around here know this place, it's a very innovative place. And he said, okay, uh, please help me connect and build up a Station F for Hanoi. And I said, yes, no problem, but I will do it differently. Because Station F is not something we want to copy. We want to adapt it to whatever is needed in Hanoi. So what does Hanoi needs? There's already a lot of incubators, so many projects, a lot of money coming in. Yes, that's right, a lot of investors, we can see it around here. Um, uh, so what I think is that, and I'm very upset because so far Vietnam is not creating enough 
Vietnamese technology, right? For Vietnam, by Vietnamese people. Uh, so the money comes from abroad. Uh, the people work for companies abroad, and I'm not very happy with this. So basically, what I told him is that okay, let's create a place where um, it's all about sustainable city. Yes, um, and but actually, not only the technology. Not only in the purpose of the, of the startups, but also in the way we do it. Meaning, let's build up a community that is really uh, involved in sustainability, uh, in smart city, but also working on, on smart transportation, smart um, buildings also, because there is a real issue about a building here. Uh, agriculture is also something. And actually what is lacking right now is probably solutions that help um, leapfrogging, right? go faster. Go faster, but also involve the people that are here. So in this place, there will be, of course, the needs of the, of the city coming in. We'll find the technology that already exists for those who do not exist and help build up ecosystem and new startups, uh, Vietnamese startups by Vietnamese people. Again, I'm sorry, keep on saying that. Uh, but also, um, I want to create an open open school uh, because I think that we have to work with the community that is under 20, actually, right? Help them get get into the uh, and help them get access to the market. Uh, because actually, it's not only about create, having a great idea, or have, uh, having money to have it, but actually, then how do you make it sustainable? And so sustainability in this way is getting access to the market, right? And in this place, um, this is why I'm wanting also to work with um, the uh, with the end users. And so <laughs> we have an open innovation uh, lab uh, inside this incubator, of course, um, and also schools work with universities with the community here, so that we make sure that we build not the best technology but actually um, that we do meet the needs of the people here. So, you know, so we want to involve really the citizens also in this, so that we, we make useful technology, right? Technology that you use, then technology that people will buy at the end of the day, right? And we think that, you know, it's not about getting one when you talk about sustainable city, sustainable city is so many, there's so many issues in there, right? So um, maybe you have the best technology just for smart transportation for uh, buses, but you don't have the one for cars. Maybe you don't have the one, so you know, it's also how do we connect the dots and create a community of startups working in, for, the same, for the same objective, which is building a sustainable city, um, uh, sustainable city technology that is that has a real objective to serve ASEAN countries and first in Vietnam. Yeah. So what I'm doing in there? Well, I'm connecting the dots. Yes. Right. Uh, connecting the dots, uh, trying to to get people involved. Uh, not only that, but uh, yeah. And uh, because I have been working uh, for now more than 25 years in technology, in innovation, in startups, and ecosystem, etc., then I will help and, and empower whoever wants to work with me in this. That's it. So you, it's interesting because everything was interesting, but you, you talked about the, the end user. So for the smart city, the end user is of course the citizen, but also the city. And the citizens, city. the city, and the companies inside the city. Everybody is exactly. involved. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I want to jump in and to ask a question to, to Arby. Uh, because with Aceman Venture, you create connection between uh, corporates, uh, startups, investors, etc. And how actually do corporates work with startups? How do you connect them uh, for corporates to implement sustainability process? Uh, thanks for your question. Um, yeah, so um, I think corporates have always had this uh, sustainability is always something quite big within corporates. Um, it's really how they implement it. Um, in most of the successful corporates, sustain sustainability um, not not particular to environmental sustainability, but for business sustainability, BCP plans, um, you know, uh, continuity. 
sustainability is always a big part of running a successful um, a corporate. So these processes, you know, are, have been tried, tested, um, failed, you know, redone, re, you know, and continually renewed and updated. Right? They've got the resources, they've got the expertise, they've got the know-how. Um, so how how do we how do they then translate this knowledge to the startups? Right? Um, one one of the issues that I I, I, I see. Um, uh, that a lot of these corporates actually face um, in terms of this uh, um, pull between sustainability and, and innovation, right? Is that they are always very, they, they, they tend to be quite stuck in their own ways um, because it's it's difficult to change, right? Um, so so what I've seen in in, in some corporates in, in Singapore in terms of how they work with with uh, with startups is that they try to um, bring these startups into their offices. They give them, you know, they give them, uh, uh, maybe they hire out a completely um, separate space to their, to their company, but um, giving them the subject matter experts. So for example, um, NTUC Income in Singapore, it's a, it's a um, one of the oldest insurance companies in Singapore, local, local insurance companies in Singapore. Um, what they knew was that they knew how to run a very successful business, right? They, they've got one of the largest uh, margins for, for motor insurance. Um, however, uh, they were just a really old, big giant with you know people 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 who are, have been in the company for the past 20, 30 years, and and you know they they're never going to bring in any you know new um, sustainable innovation, right? So what they what they decided to do was that they, they hired out this whole completely new new space, uh, not within their own corporate offices. Uh, and in fact it's in, in, in one of those shop houses. Um, they rented out like four or five shop houses, made it into a you know a cool sort of cool place. Uh, and then and then started hiring um, uh, startup founders who have exited their companies to come on board in-house and then provided them with the subject matter experts, told them, you know, this is how, this is the problem that we have, uh, this is how we've been doing things, how do we make things better, how do we make things, you know, more sustainable, how do we, you know, if, how do we, uh, you know, uh, uh, do things different, right? So, um, this is something that I've seen uh, some of the corporates have started to, to, to implement. Uh, in terms of how they're working with startups, uh, trying to in-house them, uh, which to some people can seem as a way to uh, block out competition. You know, it's like you know, staking your, <laughs> st staking your, your, you know, like uh, you know, building, uh, not not giving your competitors access to the same uh, technology that these guys might be creating for you. Um, but, but in a way, um, I feel that this is quite useful um, because you actually get, because a lot of these corporates actually have a lot of uh, uh, data, they have a lot of uh, a, a long business history, they've got a lot of resources, right, which in fact a lot of startups don't have, right, they, they may come into a place, into a, into a space, uh, but they take a long time to actually learn about that space, uh, to create a, a product that is, is 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 uh, directly uh, needed by the, the, the corporate in a sense. Um, so working directly with the corporate, having that access to their to their um, uh, uh, data, to their expertise and, and their resources um, is very very important um, and a lot more efficient as well, rather than uh, just you know trying and then failing. And then try again, you know, without you know really going anywhere. Um, so I think that is that could be something that we are trying to um, grow on a bigger bigger scale. Trying to uh, get more corporates to be more open to in housing some of these startups to actually um, may not be just invest in them uh, at the start, but just to provide them. Uh, so-called safe space to sit in, you know, come in, 
learn about what they're doing and then coming up with a solution rather than creating a solution and trying to sell it to the corporate mm -hmm. and say, hey, use my solution. But the corporate will be like, you don't know what's my problem, why should I use the solution? I've got a huge team that can solve my problem already. Right? So I think it's, it's a little bit uh, uh, reverse in, uh, in, in the way some of these things have been done. So that's something that we're trying to um, hopefully change yeah. or make better. So, so, what, what, so what I understand from, from the different uh, point of view is we need the ecosystem to have a, a bigger impact. Uh, we talked about the government, but we talked about uh, countries, we talked about companies uh, working with startups to actually not have a small impact, but really have this, this bigger impact. Aaron, uh, so you founded uh, Hatch in 2012. Uh, you started with uh, Entrepreneurs Coffee, uh, entrepreneurs discussing about ideas, uh, etc. I know you also work sometimes with embassies also on different uh, environmental projects. Do you think sustainability, from what you were in the, really the first position uh, to see the, the ecosystem grow, do you see sustainability as a key factor for developing startups and, and SMEs? Yeah, I think so. Um, about six years ago when we started Hatch, we, I'm from California, and so even in, in high school, we're, we learn a lot about caring for the environment, and, um, and there's a lot of laws surrounding this, and, and, and public communication initiatives towards saving water and not throwing out the trash. But when I was a kid, I grew up in Oregon, and Oregon is a very beautiful, pristine, natural state. But we would drive down the road and throw our trash out the window. I don't know, because we didn't think it mattered like back then in the 70s. Uh, but the state uh, started the program uh, uh, where you throw the bottle out and someone picks it up, they can collect money. And so even though uh, we, we are well-meaning and, and even though we know the earth is going to wear out eventually, um, how long it wears out is really up to us. And, uh, but everyone, nobody does anything unless there's incentive. It's just the way humans are. There is a cost-benefit analysis in everything we do, so there has to be some incentive. Um, but fortunately, um, and, and by accident, I suppose, when we, we started to endeavor to do startup activities, um, we didn't predict this or plan for it, but suddenly a lot of international organizations came to us and said, we want you to organize our sustainability or environmental event for us. And so we became an, uh, like an acting agent for a lot of programs. The first one we did that I can remember is um, Code for Resilience. And we, it was a hackathon for develop solutions for recovering from a natural disaster. Natural disasters are becoming more common as a result of climate change. Um, not about three years ago, we were uh, contacted by the Korean aid organization, uh, Flow Through Agent, called Crevice, and we did something called Remake City. And a lot of startups came and applied for that program. And we also had done work with the UN, uh, with the UNDP, uh, and they organized the Sustainable Development Goal Challenge. And so I think why is all this happening is probably because we feel. Um, we feel the change, we feel the impact. You go outside and you breathe the pollution, or you feel that, you know, my, my, my electric bill in July was astoundingly high because I was using the aircon a lot. And uh, so we're, I think we're all beginning to directly feel the cost, and therefore it's incentivizing everyone, even on a personal level, more. Years ago, we needed national government-sponsored campaigns, you know, we have Woodsy Owl who said, don't litter. You know, and we have uh, Smokey Bear who says, don't, don't light matches in the forest. But we don't have that anymore. We don't have these big, powerful national campaigns for behavior change. And it's kind of a shame that we don't. That there's so many fits and starts, and we have the UN, and we have um, COICA, and all these little organizations doing little things. And I, I would love it if there were more joint campaigns uh, where you know, groups of people who endeavor to, to work on a particular area join together, pool the money, and have bigger, massive, more 
professional um, campaigns for behavior change. Because essentially, if the earth is going to wear out like a garment, what is the, the, the natural thing to do? Um, treat it better, you know. You have wash and care instructions for your clothes, and you're going to follow them if you want the clothes to last a long time. It's no different for the earth. And so what are the, the care instructions for the earth? We don't naturally have them. Like when I was a kid, I'd just throw the can out the window because I don't have the natural inclination. So that has, has to come through education, through awareness. And behavior change always starts with awareness. And I think now, this, we're, the awareness is being supported by the fact that we feel the impact, but it, there can be more. There can be more communication on this topic. I hope that answers your question. I rambled a lot. Yes, um, so because, because um, I'm hearing everything, and I just realized that I am the only one Vietnamese person sitting on this panel. <laughs> I'm not Vietnamese. Oh, you're not Vietnamese? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> my sister. Okay, okay. okay. so. <laughs> okay. Um, so, as you can see, because I, re I re it's remind myself about the entrepreneurs and the ecosystem at the moment in Vietnam about the startup in Vietnam. So what I can see is there are a lot of uh, organizations coming to Vietnam and trying to help the ecosystem in Vietnam, especially the startup ecosystem in Vietnam. As you can see, we have Hatch, which found by uh, in that, right? Yeah. So it's two years ago when I first joined startup ecosystem. It's one of the very few organizations that support the Vietnamese startup ecosystem. But then right now, if we look back, there are a lot of, a lot of international organizations coming in, for example, Eastbound, for example, uh, Scholette, for example, uh, French... Um, uh, French. <laughs> okay. um, so, yeah, so basically what we can see is there are a lot of international uh, organizations coming to Vietnam to, to try to help us, to try to develop the startup Vietnamese ecosystem. But then when I look back, there are very few organizations led by Vietnamese people. So what, we, so what we need right now is, I think, that I really want to see more Vietnamese people to you know, care more about the, the, the startup ecosystem. The reason why I'm sitting here today is because, well, I don't dare to open my own startup, <laughs> but I dare to to try and to support the startup ecosystem, and I can see the the, 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 the potential of the ecosystem. And because we're talking about sustainability now, I see that the organization, especially Vietnamese and international organization that support Vietnamese uh, ecosystem, startup ecosystem is very important to make it more sustainability and to make it to make our ecosystem grow more sustainability. <laughs>